Field notes, what's up y'all? I know I'm looking like a hipster. So today I, I announced that uh, Frank Oz is directing the one man show. I've been sitting on that for such a long time. I'm so glad that I could finally say something about it because um, he means so very much to me as a human being and as an artist and to have him helping me tell this story means a lot. He just doesn't work with anybody and I'm so incredibly fortunate that he has decided to work with me and I'm I'm not taking that with any grain of salt or for granted at all and I'm using it as much as an opportunity to make this show. I'm trying to learn as much as I can from the man because he is such a wealth of knowledge um, and he's so very important, especially to this story because he's, he's seen and experienced so much. He has a very unique experience in his life, especially when it comes to our business and our art. And he helps me articulate it in a way that is accessible as well as personal. And um, he keeps me on my, on my shit, you know? He doesn't let me, I have a tendency to um, perform. He's honest and he's just like, that's not honest. He's challenging me, which is what I need, in, in, especially in this thing. Um, and he's making me really get my shit together and get my story straight. And that's important. That's important to me. I really want the show to be about the journey that I've been on and the ups and downs of who I am, who I was, and what brought me to these specific just like anchor moments in my life and, and how Jar Jar and Star Wars plays into that and illustrates it. And what I'm hoping is you come to the show to learn about that and you, and you leave learning about or knowing something else. Um, right now, we're trying to figure out what that other thing is. Uh, and and, and uh, he's given me enough space and enough time to write and rewrite and get rid of the things that don't work and keep the things that do. It's really a magical time. And I'm going to keep it 100. There are just some days where I'm just like, how did I get so fortunate? And I know I went through such emotional turmoil, but I don't want to let that, let the idea of how fortunate I am go too. I have been very fortunate. Sometimes it's difficult to talk about my experience because I have been so fortunate. Um, and I have to realize that that doesn't take away from how I feel. Um, and I know it's all very relative. But to be honest, there are some times where I, I think to myself, what do I have to complain about? Why do I have to feel so bad and so hurt and so emotional at times with this experience? Because I have had this opportunity to work with some of the best human beings um, and some of the greatest artists. And, you know, Frank is one of those people. He's one of those people that, you know, when I'm sitting down having a conversation with him, there are times where I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, this dude is, he's a real pioneer. And then I sit down and I talk to him and I'm just like, man, this guy is really in touch. And then he has this thing. And I think this is one of the reasons why he's had so much success in his life. He has this ability to feel innocent like he hasn't lost that childlike idea of play and i feel like i lost that for a certain amount of time because of the pain that i was in and it's taken me a while to find that child play part again because everything has been so dire everything has been so important you know what I'm saying? And this idea of, I can't play. I have to be the thing. I have to be the something that succeeds. So I, I got no time to bleed. I gotta be serious, you know? This process, as well as, you know, a lot of other art, art processes, I, I've realized that I miss that part of me. I miss that childlike innocence. I miss that play. And 
you know, Frank helped me figure out why I hadn't had in a long time. And it's because that play is what helped me bring Jar Jar to life. It was so painful, my experience post Star Wars, that um, that innocence, that sense of a play, that, that reckless abandon to play, it went away. And it went away um, so much that I felt like I wasn't valuable at, anymore as a performer, which is why I hadn't done as much as I could do. Right, I, I did. I did a lot. I've done a lot since oh, the Star Wars, but I I didn't put my ass on the line as much as I I could have or should have because I was afraid of what could be a backlash, and I lost that childlike reckless abandon, and I lost that idea of play. And this one man show is really helping me find that again. It's bringing that back in in a in a really big way. It would come and go, but now it's coming back in a really big way because I'm really enjoying it. And, and you know, Frank Oz is helping me trust it again. It's a valuable thing, and I can't thank him enough. There's also this thing that I've been talking to him about, and I want to try to find a way to fit this into the show. And it's this idea of wonder. And this kind of piggybacks on the childlike reckless abandon and the play. I really played with who Jar Jar was when I was trying to figure out who he was. And I really played with this idea of everything is new and wonderful. So Jar Jar is from this separatist nation underwater. They don't want to even be a part of the planet. And so when he's banished and he's above water and above ground, this newness, you know, this wonder is what drives him. And I really found that while we were playing and, and I liked that. And that's, that's one of those things that I, I really wanna convey. And it's also one of those things that I wanna talk about losing because it goes hand in hand with this idea of play. You have to wonder about the world and be curious about the world in a way that is exciting in order to retain that sense of wonder. It's very easy to get disappointed and jaded and angry. It's easy to do as human beings. I remember when I first got my telescope and I looked at the moon and I was like, oh shit, that's the moon. I, and I know this sounds crazy. I, I saw the moon differently, even though I see the moon every day. I know, this is crazy. It felt so real and so tangible that I was just like, oh my God, the moon is wonderful. And I, and I just got this whole idea, this sense of, 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 of excitement about seeing the moon this way. And so every time there's some kind of a moon, a super blood moon or a forest moon or a hunter moon, I get my telescope out and I look at it and I wonder and, 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 and marvel at it. And, you know, I'm a New Yorker. New Yorkers are cynical by stereotype. And sometimes I fall into that. Sometimes I fall into the cynicism. It's easy to do. But I really want, I want everybody to feel how wonderful it was to be a part of this thing and how wonderful it is to be doing what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and to be alive. It's wonderful to be alive. I lost that. And I found it again, how wonderful it is. There are these big moments in your life where you figure that out. My son was born. It was that, again, this wonder was there. I really like it. I really like that idea of wonder. I'm trying to figure out how to fit that in the show. But I had a really great day working with Mr. Frank Oz. And I'm so proud and, and happy and lucky that he... Um, has given his time and his talent to help me put the show together and direct the show. I'm very happy that he trusts me enough to be a part of this and has faith in me. And I, I just feel like I'm so fortunate uh, to, to work with him and work with the people that I've worked with. And it's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. All right. Frank Oz.